Hey, good morning everyone and thank you for joining us again for today's morning worship and prayer. And as usual, let's begin this morning by worshiping Him together. God 
Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that we can start this morning by singing joyfully unto you. Lord, you said in your word that in your presence there's fullness of joy. So, Lord, we welcome your presence this morning, and I pray for that fullness of joy to be upon each one of us as we listen to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me read in Psalm 33 for those of you who are following us. You are probably aware that we are uh, doing a series for our morning worship and prayer in the book of Psalms. So Psalm 33, we're going to read from verse 1 up to verse 9. This is uh, a rather long text, so please uh, stay with us as we read from verse 1 up to verse 9. Shout for joy in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Give thanks to the Lord with the lyre, make melody to him with a harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song, play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and by the breath of his mouth, all their host. He gathers the waters of the sea as a heap. He puts the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. This is the word of the Lord. Lord, speak to us, your people, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Uh, as I've said, we are on a series in the book of Psalms. And if you look at the book of Psalms, if you're familiar with the book of Psalms, you can see that the book of Psalms are arranged in two very large categories of uh, worship songs or poems. And the two large categories of the book of Psalms is laments and thanksgivings. And if you think about that, why one part is lament, and one part is thanksgiving, it's because the two categories correspond to the two large conditions in which human beings find themselves in. Balahat po tayo. We either find ourselves in a season of testing, or maybe you find yourself in a season of blessing. And depending on the circumstance and the state of your soul, you cry out in pain when you're in a testing season, or you burst forth with praise when you're in a blessing season. So what I really love about the book of Psalms is that it gives us a variety of valid human emotions that happens during testings and blessings. And it all validates our feelings. And, and if you think about it, the feelings that are valid, lament during testing, thanksgiving during blessing, are all valid, but I want to say this, they, they're all valid before God. So kung meron kang testing na kinakaharap, and there are some things that you want to say, some things that you don't understand, some probably complaints or some pain that you want to pour out, they are valid before God. You can do it before God. Or pag sobrang saya mo naman because there are blessings and you want to shout praises and thank God, they are valid before God. So, not necessarily before the world, okay? 
So if you have a lament, it's not necessarily valid for everyone on social media, but it is always valid before God. Or maybe you're celebrating and everybody in the world is, is lamenting. Tapos nilagay mo sa social media, it's valid before God. It's probably not valid before all the world. So, But whatever you're going through, testing or blessing, whatever emotions that elicits, they're all valid before God. So I love the book of Psalms because it validates our feelings and where we're at. Now, if you look at the entire Psalm, uh, chapter 33, you're going to see that it is devoted mainly to praising God. And it's most likely as a result of the nation of Israel's victory over an enemy. There's a little prayer here and there, but the entire psalm is really devoted to praising God. So it gives us a, a little bit of a primer of, uh, of what it is to praise God. And I want to focus on that. There are three questions, three things, specifically questions, about praising God that we can see from Psalm 33. Uh, the first question is, who should praise Him? And this psalm answers, it is God's people. Uh, it says, shout for joy in the Lord, O you righteous. And then it says, praise befits the upright. If you look at that word befit, it literally means it's beautiful in the sense of being appropriate or suitable. Sa Tagalog, befit means bagay. So, how many of you have ever been in, in a, saw your family or your friends? Diba, meron kang bagong outfit. Bumili ka ng bagong shirt, bagong hoodie, or ba, bagong dress. And then, paglabas mo, some of your friends, some of your relatives will say, Wow! Ganda mo te. Haba ng hair mo. O kaya, Wow, you look good. Bagay sa iyo yan. Or, or sometimes, nagpagupit ka, nagshave ka. Wow, you look good. Bagay sa iyo yan. That's what it means when it says, praise befits the righteous. Every time we give praise to God, the righteous or the upright, and they were not talking about those who are righteous because of their just good deeds or upright because ang bait nila. They're talking about the people of God. They were talking about the nation of Israel, the chosen people of God. Every time we, as God's people, praise Him, the angels, God is saying, Wow, bagay sa'yo yan. You look good when you praise Him. That befits you. That's very appropriate of you. And why? Because if you think about it, it says, You who are righteous, we are not righteous. On my own, no matter how many good things I do, I can never, ever reach that righteous status. Why? Because I'm inherently sinful. We are all sinners, and we can never get to that place of being righteous. We're only righteous because of His righteousness. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, when He rose again from the grave, and when He got into heaven and seated on that throne, He imputed His righteousness to us. So when it says, you're righteous, I'm righteous. I'm confident I'm righteous. Not because I do not sin, not because I'm perfect, but because my righteousness has been imputed from Jesus Christ. And that's why it is fitting and proper for me and for you who've been called righteous to praise Him because we've experienced the steadfast love of God, as the psalmist would say. We've experienced His kindness. We have experienced His grace. We have experienced His forgiveness. We've been saved. We've been redeemed. We've been restored. And we've been reconciled to God. So with everything that He has done for us, it doesn't matter what we're facing now. Bagay sa atin to praise the Lord. It befits us to praise the Lord. Who should praise Him? God's people. If you're saying, I'm part of God's people, then I should praise Him. The second question, how should we praise Him? With a grateful heart. 
In verse 2, it says, Give thanks to the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to Him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to Him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. With a grateful heart. And you're probably thinking, Pastor, di ba, pag praise mo siya, talaga namang you're praising because you've got a grateful heart. Not so all the time. Do you know that we can praise God mechanically? How we can praise God? Kasi eh, lahat, magtataas ng kamay, so I'll raise my hand. Lahat kumakanta, so I'll sing. It can be because of tradition. It can be because of religion. And the Pharisees, the Pharisees were praising God. But they were praising God so that men would see. It's not really out of a grateful heart. The, uh, si Jesus Christ sinabi, sino dito yung mas napi-please si Lord? Yung Pharisee? Na nakaas ng tamay, tapos tumitingin dun sa katabi niya. And he's looking at the sinner and saying, Lord, thank you that I'm not like this sinner. That's not a grateful heart. That's an arrogant heart. Thank you that I'm so righteous and I'm not like this sinner. And then he said, or that sinner who's bowed low and said, Lord, I need your mercy. So we can be praising God in a pharisaical manner, but really, is that how God wants to praise him? No, the Bible says, with a grateful heart, with thanksgiving, and a sincere praise would always uh, accompany uh, thanksgiving, singing. The Bible says, use your voice, shout for joy. It says, sing a new song. Uh, sometimes it's shouting. Sometimes it's playing the instrument. Sometimes it's clapping. So whatever expression of gratitude you have, that's part of praising God. How do you praise Him? With a grateful heart. Sometimes with singing, sometimes with shouting, sometimes with playing the instrument, sometimes with a lifting of the hands, sometimes with clapping. Third question, why should we praise Him? And the answer is because of God's work and God's work. In verse 4, you uh, remember, for the word of the Lord is upright and all His work is done in faithfulness. Let's talk about God's word first. God's Word is powerful. The psalmist describe it as upright, which literally means without deviation. Straight without deviation, without flaw. It also means straightforward so that it's so agreeable. It resonates as right to the beholder. What does that mean? What, what it means is whatever God says is right. And God's word is the highest proof that it is true. Yung iba kasi ngayon, tinitanong, ito yung sinabi ng word ni God, totoo ba yan? You can even say, is God's word true? Because if you look at what the psalm is saying, God's word is the standard of what truth is. God's word is the standard of what right is. Truth is and rightness and, and all that is synonymous with His Word. In fact, His Word is the highest proof that it is true. If it does not align with God's Word, then it is not true. And how many of you know get good news? In the world and generation that we live in today, a world of fake news, then you get God's Word. And you test it according to God's word because God's word is the proof that it is true. So whatever you read on the internet, if you want to test if it's true or right, read the word. What does God's word say about it? That's how powerful the word of God is. And we praise him because we have his word. We have the truth. We have something that is upright, flawless, errorless. Uh, second, why do we praise Him? Because God's Word is faithful. It says God's Word is upright and all His work is executed faithfully. Alam niyo po siguro by now, I'm a basketball fan. And I remember 
when I was still uh, in, in college not too long ago, we were playing in a league. And it was last few seconds, I think, if I remember it right. And we were, uh, we were behind by, by one point, but it's uh, the ball of the opponent. Kanila yung bola. So we got a timeout. We said, here's the plan. We play good defense. We come up with a steal. And then we make a shot in a few seconds. Think about that. Then we have a chance to win. The good news was, we were able to execute what we said and planned for faithfully. We played good defense. So yung point guard and and we trapped the point guard. We're able to steal the ball. I got the ball. I dribbled the ball, a few dribbles, fast break, passed it, got it, shot it. We won. How many of you would wish every plan and everything you say can be executed faithfully like that? Ako yan. But unfortunately, this doesn't happen every time, does it? <laughs> uh, how many of you have ever promised to your kids, okay, here's the plan. Tomorrow, we'll play outdoors and we're going to have a good time. And then a storm hits. And you're not able to execute faithfully what you've said and what you planned for. But not with God. With God, when He speaks, bam! It happens. He said, let there be heavens, then heaven. Let there be seas, there's sea. Let there be animals, animals. Let there be man, created man. And then let there be breath, there's breath. And then he says, let the earth rotate in its axis. And it was so. Let it revolve around the sun. And it was so. And everything that you see today are in its proper state just because God's words has spoken it and He is faithfully executing through His word. Why do we praise Him? We have God's word. It is flawless. It is, it is upright. And then He works to execute His word faithfully. And no matter what you're going through, whatever He says to you, Whatever he has said in his word, we can be assured it will all come to pass because his word is to execute his word faithfully. Now, let me end with this encouragement in verse 21. It says, let me read in the NIV version. In the NIV version, verse 21, it says, In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. This psalm begins with a theme of joy and it ends with a theme of joy. I want to encourage all of us, praising God doesn't simply make you feel good because feeling good is temporary. Praising God strengthens you and leaves you with a permanent joy no matter what you're facing in life. So I would like to encourage you, wherever you're at, whatever situation you're in, and whatever you're facing, maybe you're in a time of blessing, it's easy to praise God, but maybe you're in a season of testing. I would like to encourage you, praise God anyway, because you'll be strengthened and you will receive a permanent joy that no testing, no trial, no enemy could ever steal from you. Let us pray. Lord, thank you that we can praise you in times of blessings, but we can praise you in times of testing. Lord, I pray for those of us who are in times of testing, that you would give us the grace to praise you no matter what. Lord, give us the reasons you have given us your word. And we know that you execute your word perfectly and faithfully. Lord, I pray that you'd give us a grateful heart that no matter what, we will praise you with gratitude. Lord, thank you so much for this day. We give you praise.
and we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we end, can we just worship Him in praise once again? You are holy, strong, and mighty, ever faithful God. Thank you, Lord. As we end, let me give you a benediction. It is in Romans chapter 15, verse 13. You probably have heard me say this. You probably have memorized this. But Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. God bless you, everyone, and have a great day.